Earlier in the year, I was given a cool opportunity and able to partner up with Rococo, who if you don't know, are the company behind the SmartSuit Pro, a semi-affordable motion capture solution for individuals, artists, and small teams alike. I say semi-affordable because given the context of how much most motion capture solutions cost, this one is far cheaper, but this is some serious hardware, and so there are some budget considerations to be had if you are thinking about picking one up. As an independent developer, I find that good character animations are really difficult difficult to come by. And this isn't just generic walk cycles or things like that, but characters reacting to something or interacting with something in a very specific way. And usually to create something like that, it can be pretty expensive. You're not really gonna find anything like that in a library. So you need to hire an artist to animate the very specific thing you're looking for. So I was super curious to find out just how good the Smart Suit Pro can be and whether or not it would fill the gap that we have as independent developers. Because to me, these bespoke animations I'm looking for seems like the ideal place for a motion capture suit. Being able to create these really specific and nuanced animations on my own in one go sounds incredibly desirable. And so could a suit like this fill that gap and save me time and money in the long run? Let's talk about it. Hello there, I'm Matt and welcome to Game Dev Guide. And in this video, I'm gonna be giving you my first general impressions of the Rococo Smart Suit. I'll talk about some of the issues that I've run into trying to set this up, as well as how I went about fixing them and the general workflow that I found myself getting into so far. I just wanna disclose that Rococo sent me this suit under an agreement to create a couple of videos about how it's good for game dev, but they didn't tell me what to say or specifically cover anything, which is always good from a sponsor. The only thing they want me to mention is about their motion library, which I'll talk about in a future video. But I should make it clear that something like this is something I wanted to play around with for a really long time. And I find the text super fascinating. So please do just consider that in mind while we go through this video. So the suit that I got technically comes in two parts. There's the smart suit itself, and then there's the smart gloves, which are an add-on piece of hardware. The suit gives you full body tracking from your head to your toes and roughly tracks your hand position. The smart gloves themselves are used to more accurately track your wrists as well as any physical hand gestures through sensors on the fingers here. The suit itself, it's pretty simple. It's just overalls that you put yourself into and it's made of this stretchy like material. I can only really equate it to kind of sportswear fabric. They come in a few sizes that are designed to fit a number of different body types. For reference, I'm just over 6'3 and about 115 kilos. So I'm a pretty big guy. This is the largest suit and aside from a little bit of a struggle around the shoulders, I can fit in it pretty comfortably. A friend of mine who's a similar height, but way skinnier than me, had no trouble getting into the suit and it also fit him just as nicely. So if you happen to have a few members on your team who are of similar build, you can easily get away with just having one suit. The gloves are fairly similar in design and there's not a lot to say about them really. They're pretty easy to get on and off and they only come in a couple of different sizes. So you just need to know your hand size. This is a large, um, my hands aren't the largest in the world, but they fit pretty nicely. Running around the inside of the suit are these small magnetic sensors, and these are the magic that make all the tracking happen. They're hooked up into the control box on the back of the suit, which if you're wearing is almost unreachable. If you're on your own and happen to run into any trouble, unfortunately, you're gonna have to go through the motions of taking the suit off be able to get to the back of it and interact with the box just to fix whatever issue you're having. So my advice is anytime you're gonna do a recording session to just make sure everything is working properly before putting the suit on because I found that out the hard way a couple of times. Which leads me into talking about some of the issues I found setting it up. It took me a long time to get this suit working as I ran into multiple problems before I could really get a good result from the software. Thankfully, the support team over at Rococo were really good at responding and, and helping with any issues I had, which is again, really good. But I wanna make it clear that this is far from a plug and play piece of kit. So if you are thinking about purchasing one, be aware that depending on your situation, you may have to do some troubleshooting. For that reason, I just wanna run into some of the issues I had and how I fixed them in case you decide to pick one up and run into similar issues. So firstly, it's worth pointing out that this suit talks to your machine through your network. And the software is then supposed to talk to the hub to receive all the tracking data. Like most hardware, the first thing you wanna do is update the firmware. However, literally the first thing I did was try to update my gloves and the process of doing that bricked the firmware and then I just couldn't use them. Thankfully, I looked around and discovered that there's a way to reset the gloves, but it took me a while to find it on their support page. After following the instructions, I then managed to actually update the firmware properly on the gloves, 
So if you run into any issues like that, know that they can be fixed. You can roll back the firmware, even if it seems like they're bricked. Um, I'll link to the support page down below on how to do that. So with the firmware updated, I then tried to set the suit up with my network. And this is pretty straightforward. You just plug your devices in and use the software to assign each device an ID and your Wi-Fi information. After setting my devices up and getting them talking to my Wi-Fi, I tried to unplug them and get them to just connect wirelessly. And this was probably the most painful part of my troubleshooting process. After a lot of sleuthing and dealing with firewall settings, I finally realized that my PC couldn't be discovered, which meant that my suit couldn't find my PC on the network. So I just need to make the PC discoverable in my network settings. I really wish that they'd added all this to their support page because I would have saved an evening of tearing my hair out. Okay, so finally, I was getting them talking and everything was set up, firmware was updated, I, we were good to go, right? Wrong. <laughs> this one was more of an issue with my specific setup. As it turns out, the suit and gloves work best on a five gigahertz network, but only on a specific set of channels, which my internet service provider, given their helpful nature, decided that they would configure for me and not allow me to change. So this meant that I had to go and buy a brand new Wi-Fi router. With that though, I was finally able to set the suit up, get it talking on five gigahertz, and have everything working smoothly. It's worth mentioning that there's no power supply included in the suit. It has a little USB cable in the front pocket that you can connect to a power brick, which actually is kind of neat considering most of us already have one lying around. And with a powerful enough brick, the suit and gloves can run off of the same source. So I just picked up this anchor brick, which I will link below. The suit doesn't really draw much power either. So unless you're doing a really, really long capture session, you're able to get quite a few sessions out of one single charge. And so with the technical troubles out of the way, I was finally able to start playing around and see what this suit can do. It's worth pointing out that there's actually two pieces of software at the moment. There's the Rococo Studio Legacy and Rococo Studio Beta. The Beta has a bunch of new features that improve tracking for the Smart Suit Pro 2, including higher frame rates, smarter interpolation, and some new features that are coming in the future as well. However, because it's still in Beta, it's not quite at feature parity with the Legacy Studio. And in my test of the suit, I actually ended up with better capture in the Legacy version of the software, whereas the Beta felt a little bit more janky in some places. Over time, I'm sure this will improve as they seem to be pushing up updates every month, but right now, anytime I need to use the suit for production work, I'm using the legacy version of the software. I'll be covering the suit again in a future video later in the year, so I'll come back to this and let you know how the beta improves as they add more features. I will say, after troubleshooting everything, it was awesome to see it working and see myself moving around on screen, doing exactly what I was doing in real life. It's kind of incredible how good it is at actually tracking your movements and picking up little micro movements that you make with your head and body. I also found that three out of four times there's barely any cleanup work that I have to do, but the tools they do provide you with to reposition and reinterpolate your character's movements are really awesome and super intuitive to use. I captured a bunch of test animations recently and out of about 30 captures I only really had to move four or five of them into Blender for manual tweaking. And it really is something incredible to be able to just spend an hour in your bedroom or office and capture a whole bunch of different animations for your project. I was able to just spend an entire evening thinking about some of the animations I wanted for some background characters and record them there and then. The software makes it super easy to review them and get what you need in a single session. And then getting them out of the software is also super easy as well. You can batch export animations into FBX files and then they come into Unity with a humanoid rig so they can be shared across any of the humanoid characters in your project. I just created a basic humanoid character in Blender, imported all of my animations into Unity, and they just worked great. I wanted to capture a little library of gestures and poses that NPCs could use in a conversation. Something that I found was severely missing on sites like Mixamo or in specific animation libraries on the asset store. Now I have all these little pieces of conversation animations that I can sequence together in a timeline and build out a little cutscene. This whole thing would have been a lot harder to do if I was just trying to source animations or an expensive and time consuming thing if I had to animate these manually. And I'm, I'm super excited to be able to build out these libraries of generic animations that I can capture in my suit and then share across different characters in my games. By the way, this asset pack is available on the asset store if you'd like to pick it up. It's also available to any Patreons in the Unity package tier. I'd love to capture more animations and build them out into an asset pack like this. So if you have any animations that you think are missing from libraries and such that are generally easy to do in a small room, 
uh, come hang out in the Discord and leave some suggestions in the requests channel. So would I recommend the suit? Absolutely yes, hands down. As someone who either works alone or in small teams and frequently on a budget, I can absolutely see the value in a suit like this. At $4,000 for the suit and gloves together, it definitely is an investment, but if your game is animation heavy or you need really bespoke animations and you can afford it, this suit is gonna pay back dividends. Look, I know at the top of the video I said that you don't need a suit like this to be able to capture standard animations, but there is an argument to be had about capturing your own generic standard animations like a walk cycle. Multiple games using Mixamo or an asset library are gonna have the exact same walk or jump animation, right? But if you've invested in a suit like this, you can capture those yourself and know that your game is gonna have unique animations. And you can tweak or add character to those kind of animations as well. And that's kind of the key as to why I think a motion capture suit like this is really cool. Because animation is super important and animators are super important. But with this middle ground that was previously missing, being able to be expressive with your animations with just your body opens up a world of possibilities. And I think that's great. So yeah, I really think that a suit like this makes something that's previously difficult or complicated to source way more accessible. And I think that's awesome. I know I'm gonna get a huge amount of use out of this thing. So yeah, that's kind of my initial impressions of the Smart Suit Pro 2 and the Smart Gloves. So if it sounds like it's something you or your team will also get use out of, I've posted more information down below. I know this one has been a little different, but I thought it would be fun to branch out a little bit and do a little review. So if you've enjoyed it, be sure to hit the like button and let me know your thoughts down below. If you're new to the channel and want to see more videos from me, then be sure to subscribe as you'll know when new videos go live or feel free to check out the recommended video on screen now. As always, thank you very much for watching and I will see you again next time.